cool. Well, I hope you all had an opportunity to write down a few words about where you are on your journey. But before we go any further, I want to just uh, take a minute to sort of share that with a friend. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have Miss Angie pause this video for about 60 seconds. And I want you guys all to take turns sharing a little bit about where you are on your journey with each other. So pause this video, share with each other in the group where you are on your journey, and then we will jump back in. All right, so hopefully you guys had a chance to share a little bit about where you are on your journey with each other. And um, I just wanted to kind of share with you guys the other important thing to know about the journey. So the first one is that we're all on the journey. Starting the journey is the big thing. It doesn't matter where you are, how far you are along on the journey. If you're in a journey walking with Christ, it is a good journey. And the first step is the most important. So just keep going. But this is the other thing. You know, when we go on a journey, we use directions to get where we're going, right? Back in the day, I would go with my dad to uh, AAA, and he would get these um, trip books, and they were like well, they were like little little pamphlets, and each piece of it had a different page of the map on it. And so we'd leave our house, and it would have the map from our home to our destination, and we would just turn pages, and it would show us the next leg of the journey, and they'd be like, oh, from from Louisville, which is where I grew up, to Atlanta, and the next piece would be from Atlanta to Birmingham, and the next piece would be from Birmingham to Gulf Shores, and all of a sudden we were at the beach, right? It was really cool to have this sort of um, map that laid out the journey for us. Nowadays, we just get on our smartwatches and our smartphones or on our navigation systems on our car, and we put in the directions, and there's something there that tells us how we need to get to where we're going, right? It's telling us directions. It's showing us which way to go. And um, in our Christian walk, we have something like that. So what do you guys think it is? Somebody say it out loud. What is it that God gives us to help us have directions on our journey. Anybody have the answer? Maybe, did you say it? I don't know, because I'm not there. But the answer is this, it is our Bibles. Our Bibles are like this incredible roadmap that helps us along on our journey. And it's really cool to have that because otherwise we'd sort of get lost along the way, right? We'd maybe start the journey and find ourselves in the wrong direction or not knowing where to go or what to do next. But thankfully, we have the Bible to lead us and to guide us. Now, here's the deal. Every once in a while, I will start a journey following the directions. And about halfway through, I decide I know where I'm going and I don't need the directions anymore. And so I throw the map in the back seat of the car or I turn the volume down on my GPS and I turn the volume up on my radio and I just live in my own little world. Now, do I always get where I'm planning to go? Maybe not. But if I'm following the directions, I always make it to where I'm supposed to go. I always make it to where I'm direct, where I'm headed. And that's the same that is true with the Bible. Um, we want to make sure that the Bible is in front of us all the time. And so, actually, there is a project or a big task for both the God in Me and the God in Life class, and that is to commit to reading the Bible every single day while we're doing the Pray program together. So, that's a lot to ask, right? Maybe some of you guys read the Bible already and you're like, ah, I can do that. I'm already reading the Bible. This will just be fun. Um, that's cool, and I'm excited for you. Um, we'll have some fun ways and some fun tools, resources to help you as you read the Bible. Um, others of you may be like, wow, you want us to read the Bible every single day? Uh, I don't even like read my homework every single day, right? So that might be a big challenge. Don't be afraid. We've got tools that are going to help you along the way so that you can be a part of this journey, so that you can use the map that God gave you, which is our Bibles, all right? So if you are in God in Church, I want you to take your workbook and we're going to turn into lesson one. And your first week of Bible reading is going to come from this blue box on page five right here. So this blue box on page five, there are, there's a whole list 
of different Bible passages um, that you could do. There's the Last Supper, the Great Commission, Jesus' first miracle, Jesus' death on the cross, the triumphant empty entry into Jerusalem. There are all types of really cool stories that you could read from your Bible. And so I want you to take the index cards that are on the table, and I want you to write down seven Bible verses, all right, on the front of the index card. Seven Bible verses from this list. And then on the back side of the card, what you're going to do this week is you're going to read the Bible verse, and then you're going to turn the card over, and on the back side of the card, you're going to write down three things that you learned reading that Bible verse. So there'll be a card for every day. So for instance, I may choose to write down Jesus is born, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. And I decide that that's the card I'm going to read on Monday. So Monday night, I wait, I get ready for bed and I say, hey, it's time to read my Bible. Now open my Bible up. You can read your Bible anytime. Maybe you read it in the morning. Maybe you read it after school. Maybe you read it when you go to bed. I read it when I go to bed. That's just my time. So I take my card out. I read the passage from the book of Luke. And then after I'm done reading that passage, I think, wow, God, have you taught me anything new while I was reading this? And I'm going to turn my card over. And on the back side of my card, I'm going to write down the new things that God has taught me from reading that story out of Scripture. Now, we know that in the Bible, everything that is in there is true. and Everything that is in there is God's Word. So you're going to learn some awesome things. You're going to hear about some really cool stuff. So... God and church kiddos, I want you to take your book, take an index card, six, seven index cards, and write down seven passages that you're going to read this week. And write them on the front of your card, on the back of your card. You're going to write down three things that you learned about it. Bring them back with you next week because we're going to use them in lesson one. We're going to use the things that we learned in this passage um, in lesson one when we do our work together next week. Now, God in life, it's going to be a little bit different from you. Your workbook is intense, let me tell you. But don't be overwhelmed because we're going to work through it together. If you are in the God in Life program, you're going to open up your book and you are going to go to page four. And it is the beginning of section one right there. So section one, God calls all kinds of people. And there are 14 questions in this book and there are lines for you to answer the questions on. And so what you're going to do is you're going to read the question, read the scripture that's in the question, and then you're going to answer the question on these lines. Now throughout this passage, you're going to see little places where it says discuss, and it has things in green. Um, when you get to those discuss questions where it says green, those are the things that you and I are going to talk about next week at the end of our class. So you don't have to answer them. Just the places where there are lines to write on. So read the question read the scriptures, and then answer the questions on the line. And if you do two questions every night, then you'll be ready and complete with lesson one by the time we get together next week. So, whew, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now, I want you guys to, as we wrap up here, I want you guys to do a couple things for me, all right? If you're in God in church, I want you to do your index cards and write on the index cards what the seven passages are that you're going to read this week. If you are in God in Life, I want you to look over those pages and see if there's anything that's confusing to you. If there is, ask Miss Angie, or if, and if she can answer it, she will. If not, she will send the question to me, and I'll make sure that I get with you first thing this week to help answer that question for you, okay? All righty, then. You guys are all done, all complete for the first week of God in Life and God in Church. And we'll see you again next week, having read our Bibles and begun our journey with the Lord, right? All right, talk to you guys later.